In Fusion 360, modeling the soccer ball, there is a lot to learn. From very complex sketches, using equations, then features like lofts and revolve cuts, and getting into some of the hardest patterns that I've done in a while. There's a lot you can learn. I like to start with a sketch on the front plane, and I need to do some polygons. So where do you find those? That's in the Create menu. Or you can do an S for search and find it. I'm going to drag and drop some polygons. So first one is a five-sided. So hit tab and then five and drag and drop this in. And then I'm going to make sure that, you know, maybe this bottom is horizontal just so it knows where it sits in space. And let's give it a value. This number right here is very important. This is going to give you, this is going to be your main dimension that kind of drives everything else. So um, for bonus extra points, you can come in and change the name of it and make it a, let's give it a fancy name. So this is called change parameters and find the table. You'll find that dimension and give it a new name instead of D1. Let's call it base. And now if we go back into this sketch, this is now base. We want to do another polygon. And this is our reference polygon. And this is all to help us get the first two shapes correct. And then it's kind of smooth sailing after that. So you need to make sure that these two lines line up. So I'm going to make them parallel. So uh, now it's just one's bigger than the other. And place a dimension. Now I'd like for this to be twice what this is. So you can just type in the name of it, which was base times two. And now we've got this reference dimension here. Terrific. And we can finish this sketch out and go from there. We need to get the angle of the next shape, the next polygon. Why does the angle matter? Well, when I built this, you can see that you're going to turn this into two lofts. And getting this angle is really important. You can see here where I got it wrong, I've got a lot of interference. So the, getting these dimensions at the beginning correct, it's going to save you and actually let you build it correctly. So the next thing we need to do is sketch some, some geometry. So we're going to start a sketch and we'll go through, I'm going to go through this right here through this plane and you can do it. Do a plane that's running right through the middle, which this one is. And you can sketch a line connecting these. Now, I want to wake them up. So where these lines cross my plane, that's called a projection. So I hit P for project and select the line and the line. Those little points get woken up. And so now you've got two points there um, on that plane. Okay, next we need to do the that angle geometry up into space that our lofts are going to reference. So I go up a little bit, up at an angle, and don't worry about getting this just right. We're going to get it all dialed in. So this line coming up, we need to do an angled line here. This is really important, this angled line. This is what dictates kind of the angle of that next shape. And so we have to figure out how to calculate this value. I'm going to make these perpendicular. I select both and there's a 90 degree angle. But I need to figure out what that angle is and how you get there my, um, by <laughs> you know, watching a lot of different videos and studying this. My favorite one was creating a reference polygon off to the side. And I want that to be horizontal. All right drop in a dimension. This is really important and it needs to be, you might have guessed it, the base dimension again. So that 40 we used, it needs to be that value or the same as your original side value. Then sketch two or just one actually construction line. Th this value, 34.641, that's the most, that's the critical value. That's what this is supposed to be. So how do we make them equal? Well, you select both and you make it equal. All right, that's that was all that work just to get that to the right value. I'll make this construction just so it's not in our way. And we're almost done finishing the sketch out. Let's sketch from the origin 
up. We can snap it into place. Coincident. And there we go. So we've got this important reference geometry now. And we want to put a sketch right here on this angled line. And the best way I could figure out how to put a plane there is actually to cheat and use surfaces. So in the comments below, if you've got a better way to do the plane there, I played with it for a while. I couldn't figure out an easier way than this. I drop in a surface plane. Doesn't matter how big you make it. Just remember, this is basically acting as a surface plane or face to sketch on. And now we start a new sketch on this plane and do another polygon, find polygon, and just kind of drop it on in space. And it needs to be six-sided, so a hex. And we need to now, I can hit the V for visibility, hide that. Didn't mean to hide my sketch. I need the corners to align or the lines to basically be equal. Same thing. So coincident and coincident. Whoops. Point to point. Coincident. There we go. So now these have the same side and we have the hex. All this work just to get this reference geometry. And now we're in business. We can start building the solids. Okay, so how do we build those? It's two lofts. So go to your features and look for loft. We can do this as surfaces actually, and we can do it as solids. What's better, the surface method or the solid? So yeah, it's a good question. Let me create another video for the surface. They're really similar. I almost prefer the surface method, but um, they're very similar. So I'll just do the, the solid for this one, lofting this profile to this point new body, hit OK, do it again. I'm going to right click and choose repeat loft. That wakes up your last use command. And I'm doing this profile to this point. And here's a gotcha. Join. We want to make sure that you're doing a new body. We need these to be separate bodies so that we can pattern them easily. Great. Okay, so before we get started on, um, you know, kind of patterning these out, we could also, um, you know, clean up these faces. Doesn't this need to be rounded at the bottom? Yeah, absolutely, it does. So we need to round that at the bottom. We're gonna use a revolved cut. So think of it as making a sphere. So let's start a sketch, front plane, start at the origin here, sketch out the circle the first circle, and you can kind of just eyeball this to get it kind of roughly wherever you want it. And we could add con dimensions, constraints, everything, just so that we're getting this correct. But I want to revolve cut this. Let me orient this so we can see it. There we go. Um, let's add some lines here. And then use the trim command. S key, search for trim, trim. I'm gonna cut that out, cut that out. All right, now what I wanna do is do a revolved cut and it's gonna remove whatever's there and leave this rounded feature at the top, okay? So we go to revolve, select the profile. The axis is one of these horizontal lines. You can see it's making a sphere that it's cutting and we're cutting, hit OK, and there we go. That looks much better. Now we've got that rounded look like we expect on a soccer ball or football. Okay, so this is totally optional for aesthetics, but I kind of like to maybe come in and add a chamfer before, um, maybe even some fillets before we get going. So I select both faces, um, put in a value maybe somewhere around one, not 100. That looks okay. And then we could add some fillets and uh, kind of round this off as well. And maybe even these corners a little bit. Totally up to you kind of how, you know, you want to kind of make this look. 
as far as these faces are concerned. I saw, I've seen a bunch of different styles on making this. And that's okay. Maybe a, a little bit too big of a fillet, but fine for now. You can always come back and edit it. All right, so now for the fun part of patterning this. And I'm gonna change the appearance, go to my appearance, go to paint, glossy. We'll do this body black and the other as white, just to make it a little easier for us to see it while we're modeling this. So is this a mirror now? Actually, we're gonna start with a circular pattern. So uh, search for circular pattern. And we're gonna mirror this white one, which is the hex. And we're gonna mirror around the axis, that original line we drew. And we need five instances. Remember, when patterning, the, the instances include the original. So we hit okay, and now we have these five. That looks awesome, very cool. Okay, so for the next one, this one gets tricky. We wanna do another circular pattern. We wanna reuse this geometry for the axes. And I wanna do this face, excuse me, this body. And I'm gonna try it around this axis. So it puts one off and sp up, just up, up off to the side. And one thing that's cool is that I actually can do one F at this angle and it's creating an extra, which I don't want. And I actually can use suppression to get rid of that. Or I think we could do a different one to get better result, but this is kind of a cool option. You can suppress any extras in the pattern. So we have one off to the side now, terrific. Now we can pattern that all the way around. So we're doing this body And we want, I believe we want five. Awesome, that's looking pretty good. And next, let's do the hex, excuse me, the pentagon in the middle, that black panel, circular pattern. I'm gonna drop in, looks like, going to drop in, we're going to do three, so it's dropping two new ones in. And then kind of the same thing. We're going to pattern it around. We'll do five, and it looks like I might be getting an extra there. Yep, getting an extra there, so I could do suppression, get rid of it. All right, we are almost done. We just need to pattern this final shape, basically double itself, all right? And it's not a mirror, because we need to almost, we need to do the same shape, but slide it into place. There is a ton of sketching here. Don't you have a framework for learning how to do all this stuff in Fusion 360? Absolutely, thanks for the shameless plug. This is, uh, the course that I put together to help you learn Fusion 360, the fastest way I know how, that'll give you a framework for building your own models and going from a beginner to a more advanced user with Fusion 360. So be sure to check out the course if you're looking to up your skills with Fusion 360. All right, so our final step here, all I wanna do is do a circular pattern, but I need a, a good axis that will allow me to flip this over. So I don't have a good line running off to the side that's effectively perpendicular to maybe this hex, uh, this hex right here. So I actually could do an axis or I could sketch it. Either one I can try this axis perpendicular and I'll do this face and this point, and there we go, it dropped that axis in, and this looks 90 degrees to this hex object. That looks okay, so let's try it. Here we go. We wanna pattern the whole thing, so we'll do, go up to circular pattern, and I'm gonna select all the bodies, and the axis is this new axis. We want 
two of them total. Remember the originals included in the count. And that looks pretty good. And there we go. So if, hey, if you got stuck, put it in the comments down below. I hope this helps in giving you detailed instructions on how to build this somewhat complex shape. Good luck. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, for more Fusion 360 videos, check out this playlist.